Perfect, right there. There Got we it. go. So three, two, and one. Uh, well, Mayor Shane, welcome back once again. Uh, Mayor's Monday here, WSAU, WSAU.com. Uh, you know, we, we we want to talk about spring. It's not here yet. I mean, it's not at least letting us think that it's spring outside. Um, I know what my driveway looks like. I have a white tunnel that leads into my garage. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to Rapids. Is that the case for you guys as well? You're, you're just continuing it's to find spots. Okay. It's not too bad. Um, but you I, haven't I run I, out of spots to put the snow yet, have you? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm over the snow, snow plow, or snow blow, then and get another snow the, the next day, you know, I just give it to us all one dumping and I'll clean up the mess and kind of getting tired of running a snowblower. Mm -hmm. Because guys my age can have heart attacks, so it's imperative to be using a snowblower. That is true. Yes. <laughs> I, and that's true for anybody as well. I mean, a wise person once told me as I was uh, in the market for a snowblower when I bought my house that uh, nobody ever said, you know, that snowblower got the job done too quickly. <laughs> it should have taken a little longer. So as always, always buy the best quality one that you can find. I agree because you can hurt yourself shoveling. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And uh, I know I know a lot of the uh, areas, again, they, it just looks like tunnels right now. People haven't uh, been able to really widen things out. I know that uh, in uh, Rapids, obviously, you've got uh, these, just like everybody else, the regulations, it has, snow has to be cleared out at a certain time. But I'm sure even at times there, it's been very difficult to, uh, for people to keep up with. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, we do get a fair number of complaints about sidewalks not being cleared, and uh, so our code enforcement has to follow up on those. But yeah, clearing sidewalks is very important. You know, everybody likes to utilize them for walking, and so it's very important to get those cleared off. And then, uh, as far as snow removal goes, uh, obviously the you've got the crews on that. They do a, a fantastic job. They've got their routines down. But uh, yep. one thing we always tend to look at this time of year when we are talking about the possibility of more snow is, you know, what does that budget look like? Is everything uh, holding up as far as uh, the snow removal and streets budgets for the for the year? Yeah, you know, because we had such a length of time where we weren't doing any snow. Um, so yeah, it's looking good. The unique part, though, is when you think about it, is the budgets for the year. So we're 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 tapping into the snow removal budget for this time of the year, and we have to worry about it at the end of the year also. So it's really kind of you know spanning spanning the beginning and end of the year, which you know if we're not once the once you hit the end of the budget, you don't stop snow plowing. So it's really about mm -hmm. managing the the labor power and allocating funds for labor. So if they're not doing snow removal, there's dollars available to do maybe tree removal. And so it just kind of depends on what the activity for the day is, where those budgets are being charged. And then uh, on top of that as well, when, once the snow does start to melt a little bit, you do have to take care of those potholes. And I don't know what, again, I haven't been to Rapids uh, in a while, in a couple of months. I don't know what what the roads look like down there. But if it's anything like they look in Wausau, this this winter has been a doozy uh, as far as potholes go. Yeah, our crews have been out on nicer days trying to, you know, work on them a little bit. But, you know, there's really no no permanent fix unless you, you know, take out that section and replace it. So, yeah, the next no plow, they got to just worry about it getting pulled out. So, But they're out working on it nice days because some of the big traders that you don't want to lose your car in need to be filled in. Mm hmm. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we are uh, glad to hear that everything you've been able to manage everything uh, down there. We're going to hope that uh, April of 2023 doesn't look like April of 20. I believe it was 2019 uh, where we got uh, some 20 inches of snow here in Wausau. We're going to hope that that's not the case. And uh, because, of course, uh, spring election is coming up. Everybody's got to get to the polls uh, in early April. Uh, but of course, uh, you can vote early. As always, the uh, in-person absentee voting is going to be opening up at, at City Hall this week. Uh, you on April, yep. Yeah, so that's correct. April twenty-first is the the first day, and it'll go through the thirty-first. And yeah, people can cast their absentee ballot. Otherwise, show up on the polls on on election day. 
and uh, the absentee early in, the in-person absentee voting uh, process for that uh, hasn't changed uh, much in the last uh, couple of years, has it? Nope, I believe as far as I've been told is you know status quo as, as it has been in the previous election. And and of course we always want to check in on that because uh, things have changed so often uh, with election lawsuits and things like that. Yeah, but if uh, anybody has any questions, I highly recommend talking to their municipal clerk because mm-hmm. they are in the know. Yeah, indeed. And uh, so in your specific instance in Wisconsin Rapids, you've got the in-person absentee set up, which just allows people to get in there. Uh, You'll have a witness uh, on site that can sign the ballot and say, yes, this person was the one that did indeed cast it. And and then in that case, you're going to hand it right back to the clerk. There's no passing it off to somebody else. There's no passing it through the mail system. Uh, You've got control of the ballot throughout the whole process. Yeah, so yeah, absentee ballots can't leave the city hall, um, unless I believe it, I believe it's a hospitalized voter, somebody who's been hospitalized, obviously. And so that's the only time uh, that can physically walk out of city hall. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they, if you come in to vote at city hall, the ballot and everything's taking place right here. And by mail, you know, they can mail them out through the mail system. And then the person who it's mailed to, I guess, have to be the one to return the ballot. So I couldn't return my wife's ballot for her. And so that's, I I believe, another important part of absentee balloting now. Yeah, indeed. So, and again, these these rules and regulations have changed quite a bit over the last few years. So anybody with questions should contact uh, their municipal clerk, right? Absolutely. And uh, as far as election uh, testing and equipment and things like that, I know you're probably getting ready uh, for that as well. Um, And everything so far, been absolutely kosher. There's no reason to believe that this uh, election is going to be uh, insecure in in any way, right? No, I, I, in electric election integrity, I'll speak for Wisconsin Rapids. I feel very confident in uh, our election workers are amazing people, and they do a fine job. And I think we run a really good election here. Um, and I'm I'm pretty confident with other municipalities also. Um, you know, it's something. At least when I was a city clerk, I took it very seriously. Um, because it is a very serious time. That, and so, you know, it's last thing is I think a municipal clerk really wants to have any anything wrong with an election go under their watch. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I think Wisconsin does a pretty good job. Yeah. For the and, most part, you hear about things, but, you know, for the most part. Mm-hmm. And and uh, as far as what's on the ballot in Wisconsin Rapids, uh, you have school board and, of course, uh, statewide, the statewide race for Supreme Court, correct? Correct. And then we also have um, four minutes or aldermen, aldermanic districts up, and three of them are contested. So we have three races out of the four aldermanic districts. All right. Well, and again, if people want to know what is specifically on their ballot and uh, where their polling place is as well, we always encourage you to check the myvote.wi.gov website. That's a great uh, resource. Yep. mm -hmm. And you can also, I believe, request an absentee ballot through there, too. So Indeed. um, You certainly can. Very informative and useful website. One more thing uh, before we let you go. We do have uh, the spike friendly community survey that's up at uh, the Wisconsin Rapids website. Uh, give us an idea of uh, what this is about. Yeah, so it's an odd time of the year to talk about biking, but yeah, there's a right. survey out there requesting information. Ironically, uh, you do see bikers. Uh, I know a gentleman who hasn't used his car in a very long time. He rides his bike to work every day, mm-hmm. and so there's a number of them, and so there is a survey out there. Um, and so, yeah, you can access that through our website. And I know, excuse me, I know this is something that uh, the city of Wisconsin Rapids has uh, always taken pride in itself. Obviously, you've got uh, some 20 miles of trail that is plowed and maintained throughout the winter. So if somebody wants to go out uh, bicycling on that trail right now, uh, it certainly would not. Uh, it certainly would be in condition uh, to do so. So this is always something, the outdoor recreation that uh, that your city's taken a, a great deal of pride in. Yeah, we do our park systems and our trail systems. We do put a lot of effort towards them and they are highly used and I know the community appreciates it. So then what exactly, what kind of information are you looking for from bicyclists? You want to know what they think about the trail? Do you want yeah, to know? Yeah, well, and also like how often you ride, how often you use those type of things. Mm-hmm. 
and what's the the information from this then uh, going to be used to you know as as far as other recreational opportunities go or you may be looking to see just how many people do bike to work and maybe how much the city should be focusing on that when they do when you do street reconstruction projects yeah and also it's going towards a bigger to become a like a bike friendly community um a designation so yeah gathering that information and uh, and when you do get a designation like that, uh, it's you know some people might say, okay, it's just another right. sign that you can put at the entrance to town. But you know, exactly. occasionally, these things do matter when people are making decisions about where they want to live. They absolutely do. Those are those quality of life things that people look for when they're looking to move into a community. So, uh, how long is this survey going to be open then? And uh, how um, how much time do uh, will people be spending on it when they do it's go to take it? It's not um, a long um, survey, and I was just going to look for, um, see if I can find the uh, survey end date uh, April 5th. He's actually taking it right now as we, <laughs> no, as we talk, I, right? I looked up, and April 5th is the day that uh, it will be uh, coming down. Yeah, Mayor Shane says, no, there's no way I have that kind of attention span. Uh, <laughs> just ask anybody that's ever talked to me. I have no way of, of making that work while we're Girl. <laughs> doing an interview. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, one more thing before we let you go, then uh, again, talking about spring, summer recreation, things like that. Uh, I mean, what are you getting ready for right now? Or what can you get ready for as you're continuing to deal with uh, the remnants of winter right now? Yeah, I think it's really at this time of the season, you're just more reactive depending on the weather. Uh, you know, if you're cleaning up snow or filling potholes or, you know, also we're planning and prepping for the projects to begin in the spring, making sure we have everything ordered for our street construction projects. Uh, our fencing bid bids were just open and approved for our dog park fencing. Um, so it's really kind of gearing up and getting ready to hit the ground running when it's finally uh, spring and the snow's gone for the season. Yeah, and I know the dog park thing is, is something a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, once you do get that fencing in, is the uh, park going to be unofficially, officially opened then for the dogs? Or could somebody take their dog out there right now if they were so inclined? Um, so no, it's not open. And I, mm -hmm. we've decided that um we wanted to make sure the dog part was set and not kind of partially done and had and, and opened up and people can kind of use it while they're finishing up because there is a we cleared a nice open area but we want to make sure that gets seated and make sure that's been established before we open it up instead of having a big dog mud pit and so that, that's the important part we want to make sure it's right before we unlock the gates and let people in Nobody, nobody wants to smell that. Anybody yeah. who's ever smelled wet dog in their life, no, nobody wants to swell, smell wet, muddy dog. Exactly. That's the last so thing. we want to make sure it's all established and, and uh, ready to go. Probably, I'm going to say sometime mid-summer. Mm -hmm. And then, then it'll be open and ready to go. We'll be looking forward uh, looking to, it. Forward to it. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Mayor Shane, we always appreciate the time here. Uh, we'll look forward to chatting again uh, next month as well. Appreciate it, Mike. Good seeing you.